Welcome to the Stanex Meta Read Relay as an RF switch product training module. Read relays have long been known to have the capability to switch and carry RF signals and fast digital pulses. Hardly anyone thought read relays were capable of switching and carrying RF up to 20 gigahertz because the read switch's leads are composed of nickel iron, which has a relatively high permeability. However, 20 gigahertz is now a reality at Standex Meter Electronics. We will be presenting the reason Standex Meter and their design team have made this possible. First, it's helpful to understand where RF is used. Before the advent of the cell phone, RF was mainly used in radio transmitters, in RF receivers, radar tracking systems, and an assortment of test equipment to support these applications. Now RF is used extensively in all cellular phones, where the frequencies have climbed from 500 megahertz up over 4 gigahertz. The phones are filled with RF components that all need to be tested. This has given rise to a large number of RF testers coming into the marketplace. Coupled with RF systems are fast digital pulse usage. Fast digital pulses run the digital world. These fast digital pulses oftentimes require the same circuitry that carries RF signals. These fast digital pulses are used in computer systems, laptop computers, digital components in cell phones, digital phone systems, any digital system, functional PCB test equipment, integrated circuit testers, digital component testers and basic testers, application-specific integrated circuits, and more. Semiconductor processors run computers and determine the speed at which they process information. The heart of the computer is the semiconductor processor or microprocessor. Its clock produces the digital pulses that process the information in a computer. A processor running at 2 GHz has its clock producing 2 billion pulses per second. The more pulses, the faster computers will process information. Therefore, there's a continued push to make computers faster and faster by using semiconductor processors with higher clock rates. When you compare DC direct current to RF, you find they have many similar characteristics. On the other hand, they also have quite different characteristics. Both DC and RF have voltages, currents, and wattage associated with them. DC's voltage, current, and wattage remain constant and steady for a given load. A load represents a voltage, current, and power wattage used to operate a toaster, a TV, an oven, a laptop computer, etc. RF stands for radio frequency because radios were one of the first applications using RF. In contrast to DC, RF uses voltages, currents, and wattage power that are always changing in any given instant in time. The changes are usually occurring very rapid in time. The changes are occurring in a periodic way or as a wave motion. This wave motion is similar to the wave motion you see when you drop a pebble in distilled water. One complete cycle is considered one hertz or a sine wave. DC currents and voltages obey the simple rules of flowing through insulated copper wire. Also, the DC voltages and currents stay within the confines of the copper wire. RF prefers to flow on the outside surface or skin of the copper wire and will not flow within the copper. RF does not like to make sharp turns when flowing down the surface of the copper wire, but prefers to make gradual turns. With the correct circuitry, RF can be transmitted into the air where it no longer needs copper wire. The RF waves travel in air at the speed of light, 186,000 miles per second. Pictured above, the DC uses the entire conductor where the RF only flows on the outer edge of the conductor. RF is considered RF when the wave count exceeds 1 million cycles or 1 megahertz. Hertz is the name given for one cycle or wave named after the renowned physicist Heinrich Hertz. These waves or cycles or hertz have a voltage component, current component, and a power or wattage component. The constantly changing voltages and currents give rise to an electric field and a magnetic field that are perpendicular to each other. We study RF and fast digital pulses together because they have very similar properties. 
The electronic circuitry used to process RF continuous wave signals is very similar and in many cases use the same components. The frequency ranges are very comparable. Now when we refer to RF, we will be talking about continuous wave or sinusoidal waves. A digital pulse will in essence be a square wave. To pass digital pulses in an electronic circuit, take surprisingly better circuitry for a one-on-one -on -one comparison of a 2 GHz clock compared to a 2 GHz RF continuous wave signal. The key difference is the sharp rise of the digital pulse. Correspondingly, the continuous wave RF signal rises gradually relative to the digital pulse. So to electronically compare the frequencies between continuous wave and digital pulses, it takes a minimum of five harmonics to make a sine wave. This is shown above. Note how the leading edge of the sine in the first square wave is separated from the leading edge of the square. But by the fifth harmonic shown in the last digital pulse, the leading edge of the sine wave is very close to the leading edge of the digital pulse. So what does the five harmonics mean in the real world? Stated succinctly, to make up a digital pulse, it takes a minimum of five harmonics of a sine wave of the same frequency to make up a digital pulse. So if you have a processor with its clock running at two gigahertz, it is processing or producing digital pulses at the rate of two billion pulses per second. If you add the five harmonics, this means that electronic circuitry will need to have the capacity to pass two times five or 10 gigahertz. If the circuitry was capable of two gigahertz continuous wave, a two gigahertz pulse would be seriously rounded off to the point where the pulse becomes ineffective in carrying out its information transfer. Several new parameters need to be introduced when we discuss RF continuous wave applications and fast digital pulse applications. For RF continuous wave applications, the new set of parameters are insertion loss, isolation, characteristic impedance, VSWR, return loss, and signal to shield impedance. For fast digital pulse applications, we will need to define rise time and slew rate Insertion loss, isolation, and characteristic impedance are also key parameters in the digital world. Insertion loss is considered one of the most important RF parameters. It basically defines the signal loss when going through a component or circuit, for example, a read relay. It is measured by passing a signal with known strength down a given copper strip and measuring its signal strength at the beginning of the strip and at the end of the strip. Now the component is added to the exact copper strip and the signal strength is compared at the end. Insertion loss is measured in decibels by the equation insertion loss equals 10 times log 10 times ratio of the signal transmitted before the component insertion to the signal transmitted after component insertion. A signal loss of 3 dB is equivalent to 50% loss of signal strength. A signal loss beyond 3 dB, the signal strength becomes unusable. In the above diagram, a pulse is shown being transmitted through a set of contacts with only 50% of the signal being transmitted through the relay. Isolation is a measure of how well a component can isolate a signal from the rest of the circuit. For a read relay, the isolation is measured by isolating the signal across the open contacts. In this case, some of the signal will be coupled across the open contacts. Here the RF and DC characteristics clearly differ. DC signals do not cross open contacts. Interestingly, the gap size across the contacts and the reed blades overlap length determine the isolation. This confirms a direct correlation between the geometric configuration of a component and its RF characteristics in an RF circuit. The more you look into RF and its characteristics, you will begin to sense its closeness to the physical and geometrical aspect of signal transversal. If you begin thinking in geometric terms, it will help you better understand RF and its characteristics. Isolation is also measured in dB. Isolation equals the amount of signal transmitted through the open contacts and is measured in dB.
An isolation of minus 65 dB is considered the point where a signal cannot be reconstituted. This point is very important if you are involved with radio and or TV signals, particularly in cable transmission. Most circuits accept minus 20 dB as a reasonable working level. Some circuits can work with isolation levels below 20 dB. Read relays typically isolate signals down to minus 40 dB at lower frequencies and fall off to 20 dB in the 2 GHz to 3 GHz. The diagram above shows relay contacts where a pulse is incident on one end of the open contacts. A small part of the signal leaks through the contacts at the higher frequencies. Characteristic impedance, Z, is probably the most important RF parameter. Characteristic impedance is dramatically influenced by the geometry of the components and circuit patterns. Characteristic impedance must be consistent in its impedance level. Most RF circuits today are 50 ohms. The characteristic impedance is a vector composed of three components. The pure resistance of the circuit, the capacitive reactance, and the inductive reactance. The impedance is given by the mathematical equation Z equals the square root R2 plus XL minus XZ squared, where XL and XZ are defined by XL equals 2 pi FL and XC equals 1 divided by 2 pi FC, and XL is the inductive reactance in ohms. XC is the capacitive reactance in ohms, R is the DC resistance in ohms, Z is the impedance in ohms, F is the frequency, L is the inductance, and C is the capacitance. In this case, R is the DC resistance of the signal going through the relay. XL is the inductive reactance generated from the inductance in the signal path. XC is the capacitive resistance generated from the capacitance which is made up of the physical characteristics of the reed blades and the shield running down the internal length of the relay. The impedance is calculated at any point along the signal path. Therefore, the RF signals look at the distributed impedance along the signal path. So when the RF comes upon a change in impedance, part of the signal will be reflected backwards. This translates into an actual loss in signal strength. The signal path is critical. Any changes in the signal path will change the impedance at that point, creating a reflection and loss of signal. The shield being part of the signal path is very important to maintain its consistency. Any changes in the shield geometry will result in signal loss. It is the signal path the shield and the material between them that determines the impedance. From the geometry above, one can see for a flat reed switchblade, the impedance equation shows the complete dependence on the geometry of the reed relay. This equation shows how the physical design of a reed relay can clearly control and enhance the RF performance. Once again, the characteristic impedance for a circular reed switch lead is presented and the physical characteristics are needed to determine the characteristic impedance. Calculating and designing for a 50 ohm through the relay will generally meet most circuitry impedance. As you have probably figured out, the characteristic impedance and the insertion loss are linked together. The above chart shows the linking and changes in the geometry directly affecting the insertion loss. The voltage standing wave, VSWR, is a unitless mathematic expression that some engineers consider when selecting a component. The equation for VSWR is presented above. VSWR mathematically expresses the extent of standing waves when circuits and or components reflect some of their energy. It is primarily used in RF continuous wave circuitry. VSWRs are typically used to plot a given group of frequencies. Ideally, a plot of frequencies remaining close to 1.0 is best. Return loss is another mathematical expression that some engineers like to calculate. 
Return loss is essentially another way of expressing insertion loss. Return loss is calculated using the above equation. Up to this point, we have only been focused on the RF continuous wave parameters. We are now going to define fast digital pulse parameters. We have already gone over the characteristic impedance, insertion loss, and isolation parameters for continuous wave and their analysis and definition totally carries over to the fast digital pulse world. The rise time and characteristic impedance are the two critical parameters in the fast digital pulse world. Rise time is the time it takes for the leading edge of a pulse or square wave to go from 10% to 90% of its final height of the pulse. Components or circuits will specify their rise time. From the known rise time for a given component, the designer will know if it's fast enough for his circuit. This depends on how fast his digital pulses are in his circuit. Slew rate is very closely related to rise time. If you consider a read relay with closed contacts and a pulse or square wave is incident upon the contacts. This particular pulse is a perfect rise time. This means from 10% to 90% of the pulse height takes zero time. Now the pulse time is measured as it exits the relay. The rise time change when going from the input to the output is considered the slew rate. Giving a few examples will help to understand all these definitions. The two pulses above show an ideal world where the input pulse is the same as it exits a component. The second group shows an ideal pulse entering a set of closed contacts, which then shows the rise time change as it exits. This is an example of the slew rate through a set of relay contacts. In the above example, the first set of pulses show a typical rise time change going through a set of contacts having given a slew rate. Now, in the second set of pulses, the first pulse shows a fully functional pulse, which has to go through several sets of contacts. In this case, the slew rate is additive. So, as the pulse rate goes through each set of contacts, it continues to lose additional rise time and fall time until the pulse becomes barely recognizable. To understand the basics of RF will help give you a feel for its effects. Knowing the parameters which are most important and what controls them is the key to having a good understanding of RF. Knowing the geometry of an RF circuit and its component geometry will also help to better understand RF. In RF part two, we will focus on its physical geometric aspects.